So my name is Rui Eduardo Paes. It's the name I, I'm known around. And um, well, mainly I write about music and uh, in several kinds of uh, approaches. Uh, as a journalist and critic, uh, writing essays and, um, and a more analytical work about music. Uh, mainly um, uh, crossing uh, musical uh, questions with some aspect aspects of, of uh, philosophy, sociology, uh, political theory, and so on, uh, and also doing work as a, a, a promotion work. Uh, for instance, I, I do the press releases for for Cleanfield and Spuma, which is a sub level from Queenfield, and also doing program texts for uh, Kulturgest, uh, which is the cultural uh, structure uh, of the National Bank, Caixa Geral de Depósitos, and now also for Centro Cultural de Belém. Uh, so in terms of writing, uh, that's it, uh, the, all these aspects. Uh, going from journalism to musicology to promotion work. I'm also a programmer. Uh, I'm the uh, curator of this festival in Porto uh, with uh, Sorado Foundation. And I had an uh, improvised music festival here uh, at SMOOP, uh, which doesn't exist anymore uh, because a stronger festival with supports uh, was born this year, Jeview. Uh, but I'm organizing other things here, uh, mainly in the fields of uh, improvised and music and jazz and uh, rock, pop rock, alternative indie pop rock. Uh, and I'm interested in doing more uh, in that area. Well, I'm doing this since 84, I think, uh, writing about about this music or these kinds of music. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, I have a perception of the evolution of all this uh, during those decades uh, and the, w the way it developed, uh, observing and, and participating in it in some way because it's impossible to observe from outside, even when we want to, to be outside observers. Uh, as sociologists and ethnologi ethnologists know very well, uh, the observer influences the thing observed. So I have, I have a clear perception of that. And uh, uh, since I have an historical perspective of all this, even going before uh, the time I began doing this. Uh, well, I know very well how this started. Uh, I know very well that um, it started very late in Portugal. Uh, the first things that happened in this field in Portugal were at the beginning of the 70s. And there was only half a dozen people doing it and uh, uh, two people uh, only uh, taking the head of the movement, if you want to, to speak in those terms, because it wasn't a move nor a scene at that, that time, because th it was a few people doing it. It was Carlos Zinger and, and Jorlin Bobaret, uh, then in Porto, and Carlos here in Lisbon. Uh, in the 80s, uh, began some projects uh, inside the alternative rock field, uh, <coughs> but they converged to this uh, to this scene, and things developed more uh, in the 90s and uh, in the turning of the millennium and the century, it was really this this boom. And in the last 10, 15 years, uh, with uh, more expression. So the interesting thing is that uh, the first 
uh, niche uh, in where this boom happened was in the experimental music field. It was the very first. Uh, in the um, crossing from the 90s to the 2000s um, with electroacoustic and electronic music and, and things like that. Uh, and then it was um, jazz uh, and this boom in jazz happened both in mainstream and, and avant-garde jazz and of course uh, free improvised music. So the interesting thing about these 10-15 uh, years is that uh, uh, concerning uh, free improvisation or what we call improvised music is that several tendencies uh, began to emerge and some of those tendencies uh, with a very affirmative position regarding what you we usually call improvised music saying inclusively that well i improvise i don't make improvised music so the interesting thing is that many of the things happening in this area are from people that uh, aren't very uh, comfortable uh, with saying that i play improvised music and uh, well and people that uh, came from rock and play uh, improvised music but with that idiomatic connotation with rock and people who came from uh, visual arts as uh, painters video artists or designers graphic designers and so on uh, who use generally using electronics but who use uh, sound as a plastic material they don't have a musical uh, uh, formation a background uh, so they consider themselves more uh, as sound artists than musicians but always improvising also uh, and improvising uh, considering the particular characteristics of improvisation with electronics, computers and so on. So um, many things happening uh, inside this uh, niche and uh, in in inclusively uh, touching that extreme that uh, each one, each ind individual brings his own thing and his own thing is completely different from his neighbor <laughs> thing, you know. The boom in Smoop happened after and at the same time uh, then the boom of this music in, in Portugal. And as an observer, I think uh, that uh, contributed to give it uh, more expression. And why? Because of this systematic attention Smoop gives to this kind of music. So, uh, I used to say that uh, there was a scene uh, in Portugal but not a scenery because there was a lack of, of uh, venues to play. Uh, recently, uh, many places started to program improvised music and avant jazz and experimental music because I think it's and alternative rock if you want because I think it's, it's very connected. All these little scenes are very connected and I it's for me it's impossible to to separate it uh, but it seems to me that the other venues are not as systematic programming it as uh, smoop and uh, their improvised music programs were disseminated uh, amongst other many other things you know and and smoop gives it an attention a very systematical attention 
and there's uh, uh, one, two, sometimes three uh, uh, improvised music concerts each week here. Uh, and there's the case of Sonoscopy, of course. Uh, but but in 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 Portugal, in Portugal, in Lisbon, you have uh, the Stero with avant chairs and uh, experimental and and improvised music uh, uh, mixed with other things. And there's uh, some other spaces uh, uh, which are very. Uh, comfortable for the musicians but uh, with door money and with very little conditions and it's not possible to have this systematic uh, approach. Smoop it's, it's, it, it turned to be as a, 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 a almost hipster spot uh, nowadays because of the previous lack of venues you know and uh, during these two years in Smoop, the scene growed and growed and growed uh, because of the commitment of the people organizing it. And the, y you have this mix of different audiences. The guys who go to every concert and we know them for years because we always <laughs> we were always crossing and we turned friends, you know. Uh, sometimes we don't know their names, but we, we meet as friends because it's years and years and years uh, meeting them at festivals and, and venues around. And uh, so the people that know uh, very well what they're going to hear. Uh, people that are uh, making their first steps in this music and uh, well they ha they had uh, at the beginning uh, the, the open mind uh, necessary to uh, le let's see and the curiosity to see let's let's see what's what's that and people that come Sometimes, because they, they come to Smoop to have a drink, have a conversation with their friends and play a snoo snooker, and, but they listen uh, to what's happening at the attic or downstairs. And, oh, th this is interesting, let me see. And they buy the ticket and they, they go, wow, yes, this is very good, yeah, very interesting. So yeah, and you, you see the repercussions of that on the on the on the social uh, media, the social networks, and the uh, commentaries, and uh, and uh, you read the the online magazines and the newspapers. Oh, let's move! Yeah, this is happening. Or oh, this is going to happen. Or oh, oh, wait, this band is going to play only in Smoop and a foreign band coming from Norway or the United States and they're going to play only in Smoop, how it's possible and so uh, it created this kind of frisson <laughs> and uh, so there's a boom inside the boom and, um, and Smoop turned to be uh, one of the most important venues for this kind of music. Well, I rarely try to make futurology, but uh, I think we're going to continue what's happening now. And what's happening now, it's the mixing of all these tendencies. Um, uh, more and more the frontiers uh, between the, um, the subgenres and the sub idioms and the are disappearing uh, uh, because you, we ha we you have free improvisers that reapproach jazz and free jazz 
you have free improvisers who reapproach uh, classical contemporary music or new music in the in the case of uh, American new music. Um, you have those guys coming from rock to improvise music. Who, who are very affirmatively reconnecting to, to rock, but doing the doing it improvi improvising and uh, and experimenting. Uh, you have more and more electronic musicians uh, improvising only. Um, so I think uh, in inclusively, uh, I noticed that. There, there are there are several uh, electronic musicians in Portugal, uh, or electroacoustic musicians in Portugal, who are using the contributions of acoustic improvisers. So I think uh, in the near uh, future we'll continue to see uh, all those, uh, all that mixing, continue to happen. You know, and that's. Uh, at the same time, my wishful thinking, uh, I, I hope that happens more and more and more. I think it will happen in a very natural way. Uh, of course, th that doesn't mean uh, jazz is going to disappear, rock is going to disappear, classical, contemporary is going to disappear. No. But since it's almost, almost peaceful that uh, the pretentious non-idiomatic music never existed. It was a mistake by Derek Bailey and some guys. And since everybody understood that uh, the term improvised music uh, means several things at the same time, uh, inclusively uh, structural, structured improvised music, or that uh, some of these guys think that improvisation in reality uh, doesn't exist because you improvise the audience you have, the acoustics of the space, the, the architecture, the dinner you had, the conversation after dinner with uh, coffee and uh, a glass of Portuguese aguardente. Uh, since you improvised your, since you improvise your own instrument, because the instrument is also a score, uh, or the your mood, uh, if you're in love or not. Uh, uh, many people began to think, well, no, no, I'm not sure if this is really improvised. And I know that I'm aware that I have these ticks, these ticks in, in, in Portuguese, these uh, tricks, these uh, kind of things I do and make my own style. So I don't know, I'm usually repeating it because it's my it belongs to my way of expressing myself. So all those considerations uh, began to act as um, components of a new way to deal with things and to understand the things they're playing. So it's turning interesting and for me more interesting than ever because inclusively of uh, another thing uh, there are better musicians now 